This is the new gold standard. I don't really know how Sony managed to do this. This is the new Sony 20 to 70 F4. Yes, you heard it right. 20, not 24, 20 to 70. It is extremely light, compact. Sharpness is really, really good. The correction for distortion is amazing. And the macro is really, really good on this new lens. So come with me and let's check this beauty. First of all, Sony lent me this lens for review, no money changed hands, and they are not previewing this review before you. And I will be really sorry to send it back because it's really good. Sony kind of broke physics with this lens. As you see here, this lens is really light and it's quite compact. It's about nine and a half centimeters long and has a filter thread of 72. As you can see, this lens is also weather resistant. This lens is a G series lens, not a G Master, but it has all the features and the specs of a G Master lens. I think it's only a G because of the aperture that's only f4 and not f2.8 for example. So you have all those features like these two uh, custom buttons, the AF-MF switch. You can de-click your iris so you can have it by steps or just completely smooth. And I really love they did included an iris lock. So for example, if you are not using your aperture uh, by turning the rim, you can just lock it in A and you can control the aperture of your lens from your camera. What's really outstanding about this lens is how sharp and well corrected it is. I didn't find any kind of problem with lateral and chromatic aberration, as you can see in these samples. Sharpness, it's really, really good. I think it's at least at the level of the first generation of the 24 to 70 G Master. And also, look at these pictures of this kind of brick wall. The distortion is extremely well corrected, even with all the in-camera corrections turned off. It's really surprising. I wouldn't expect anything like that in a zoom lens. Even most of the primes have a little bit more distortion than this. This lens is a joy to use. And for bloggers, this lens is amazing because at any given moment, you can switch from talking to the camera and showing your environment to, for example, say, just look at this detail, uh, for example, this tree right here, wow, it has really cool looking Mm, fungus or lichen or whatever you call that in English and it even has an amazing amazing close focus it's almost a macro lens something that I'm guilty of loving too much is macro shooting and this lens is actually really surprising I didn't expect that at all because, well, at 20 is nothing to write home about. But at 70, wow, you can really get pretty close. I couldn't measure it properly, but it is in line of the macro reproduction of my macro one to two lenses. And that is really amazing. It is an amazing all around lens. And of course, going down to 20, I think it is perfect for vlogging. As you see, I am by no means any kind of expert about vlogging. So here you have an example of 20 millimeters with the active stabilization uh, that crops by a factor of 1.1. So it is around uh, 21, 22. So this is how it looks. I'm changing hands right now. 
just having a nice walk. So I think maybe this is the lens that should be bundled with every single Sony camera kit. Because uh, opening down to 20 is just amazing. The image quality is outstanding. Doesn't have image stabilization, but nowadays it's not that needed. Especially with cameras like the A7R5 that has like eight stops of stabilization. That's pretty, pretty huge. So who is this lens for? That's not the question. The real question here is who is not this lens for? Because everybody can benefit from a lens like this. Going down to 20, that's crazy. That's actually a new age for zoom lenses. And I hope we see more like that in the near future. And for sure, I would love it to be F2.8, but it would be much more expensive, much heavier and much bigger. So this is the perfect compromise for uh, all kinds of situations like this. Of course, camera companies have to innovate. Maybe you've seen that Nikon recently released a 24 to 120, just trying to span the classical range from the 24 to 105. But that difference between 105 to 120 is really marginal. But here we have a huge difference between the 24 going down to 20. And that is huge. That's a really big difference. Check this out. Right now we are at 24 and right now at 20. That's huge. So what are the downsides of this lens? Very little actually. First that comes to my mind is of course the price that I think it's a fair price, but of course it is a high price. But for this quality of a lens, it is amazing. And for me, uh, the major downside of this lens is that of course it's not 2.8, but I realize of course that it would be much, much heavier and bigger and bulkier. So that's a pretty good compromise. So this lens is actually quite compact. So here you can see this lens next to another uh, standard thumbs that are available in the market, like the Tamron 28 to 75 or the G Master 24 to 70 uh, second version F 2.8. And you see that it is actually quite, quite smaller, even when you compare it with the 24 to 105, that is also a four. So this lens is perfect to just carry it every day in your lens bag. My experience with this lens was uh, really, really good. I think this lens is maybe the perfect documentary lens because it gives you so much and you don't need to worry most of the time for changing lenses except just only for speciality shots. So to test it, I decided to use this lens for a documentary that I am currently shooting that I hope you will be able to watch soon. And it covers everything that I need for documentary work. It worked always flawlessly. Autofocus is simply amazing. The tracking is sticky and reliable. And well, it really helped me a lot. So if you found this review useful, please comment, like, subscribe, and follow us at photodng.com. So have a great day and happy shooting.